Hey, who's ready for a great day at church? Is anybody? Come on now. Man, we already got it going already. Do I even need to preach after a worship service like that? That was just wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to get to have the, the privilege of, of joining all together like this. Church is like a family. You know that? And so it's good when family gets to come together. Come on, give it up for yourselves one time to be part of the body of Christ. To say, this is my home. This is my family. And so... Um, so you ought to know who I am if I've never met you yet. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves one more time, one more time. Golf clap, golf clap. You're like, okay, I'll, I'll golf clap myself. That's okay, that's okay. We have a mission here at the church. You can say it with me if you know it. It's to be a lifeline by leading people and becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. Before we jump into today's message, what I'd love to do is tell you a little bit about the series that's coming up. Because it's a very important season that's coming upon us. And if you've been to Costco lately, you know what season that is. If you've been to Walmart for the last month, you know what season that is. It's Christmas time, baby. Let's go. It's exciting. If you've got your Christmas tree up already, I salute you. Absolutely. People who wait till after Thanksgiving, I don't know. I think they need to come to church more often. You know, it's like, you know, just keep on coming. Keep on coming. We'll keep praying for you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it is Christmas time coming up. So I want to take just a moment. And, and next week, we're going to start a series called Ghosts of Christmas Past. Ghosts of Christmas Past. And the reason why I call it that and the reason why it's kind of like, ooh, scary. Ooh, ghosts. She's talking about maybe the Holy Ghost, maybe. But, but let, me, let me just explain this to you. I wrote it down. This is very, um, it's very significant to me. And I know it's significant to you as well. After I explain it, I think you'll agree. For many, the most wonderful time of the year isn't so wonderful. It's not so wonderful. For, for the people that we love, for the people that we love, a, a painful past, uh, depression, insecurities, the loss of a loved one, offenses or unforgiveness can overshadow the joy that we are supposed to be feeling during this most wonderful time of the year. But what if this year could look different? What if we could make a real difference in the lives of people this season, this year, 2022, the Christmas season, could be a little different if Lifeline chooses to be a lifeline? What if you could help bring people closer to Jesus during this season? You can. You absolutely can. By inviting the people that you know and love to this series, even the people that you just meet throughout your week, we're going to have some invite cards ready for you that are specially tailored to the Christmas season. And it'll say, uh, I don't, it won't say ghosts or anything on that. It'll just say, hey, we're going to have Christmas Eve service because a lot of people, you know this, um, come to church uh, a couple times a year, especially around Christmas time. And can you guess what the other time is? It's Easter time. That's right. That's right. But hey, we love them too because maybe that's just all that they know. Maybe that's just all that they're used to. Maybe that's what they grew up and that's what their family did. Just going to pay homage real quick. But they're going to come here. They're going to hear a life-changing message that's going to pierce right through their spirit, and it's going to change them forever. We believe that, don't we, church? We believe that if we can get people to come here, that they might hear something different, might see something different than they were expecting to just check off. They came to check off a box, but something very more, more significant happened in their life. And you get to be a part of that because you will never have a better opportunity to get a yes to a church invitation than you will starting next week. Starting next week. People will start to come after Thanksgiving and after everything's Christmassy. It's just amazing what, what happens with your friends and family. They begin to go, oh, yeah, I guess maybe I should just pop into church. No big deal. There are a lot more people that will say yes to a church invitation around this time of the year. So it's time to let God heal the ghosts of our Christmas past, not only for you, but for the people that you love so dearly. It's time to go be a lifeline. Is that right, everybody? Come on, it's time. And we're coming up real soon on it. So I just want to start talking about that now, even though we haven't started the series yet. I want to put you up to speed on that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, so you can tune in with our notes and all the scriptures are going to be here on the YouVersion Bible app. There should be a way for you to find the YouVersion Bible app. Oh, there it is right there. Our team is so good. They've got this stuff dialed in. You can point your camera at that little icon right there, or you can find the, the QR code, or you can find the icon right there in your app store and follow along with all the notes. There's also bullets and inserts that you can find. If you're really 
kicking it old school and be like, man, I want to write it down, yo, and use it as a bookmark in my Bible. I salute you too. If that's you, we've got bulletin inserts like that at the front. They're there every single week. I don't know if you knew that, but you Vision Bible app is a great way to follow along. So let's jump into today's message. This is the final week of our series called Legacy, where we've been talking about leaving a legacy to the next generation, using our, our, our treasure, our talents, and our time to make a difference in the lives of others. But I got to just first, I got to tell you about a problem. There's a big problem going on in our country today. Let me tell you about this problem that our country has. It's very serious to me. All these huge weight gaining holidays are way too close together. They're like right next to each other. You've got Halloween, bam. You've got Thanksgiving, wham. And then if that wasn't enough, you've got Christmas coming up, whack, whack right there. And I'm like working all year long. Keto, goodbye, goodbye, keto, because I can't do that. When my wife starts making all this delicious food and people are giving me cookies all, I can't do it, all right? I only have so much self-control and our country has a problem. Spread it out, okay? Can we celebrate like the ghosts and demons and stuff like in the summer? Okay, like you're gonna make me go outside and walk around for some candy. Let's put it in the summer. Like, let's just do it then. Man, can we do Thanksgiving in the springtime? Leave, leave Christmas during the winter. I like white Christmases. Okay, but let's move the other ones. Let's move the other ones. It's a big problem that we have. We need to spread it out. We have an opportunity to really help uh, the problems that I tend to have during this season by just moving things around. I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about opportunities today. I had an opportunity uh, at one point in my life uh, to, to meet someone really, really cool and... Um, how, let me just ask this question. How many of you feel like you ever missed a really good opportunity? Come on, wave your hand at me if you ever felt like you just had an opportunity maybe to get a good job or maybe to like uh, connect with someone that you were really into. Don't raise your hand if you're married or not married to that person, all right? We're not going to go there. This is not the marriage conference, all right? We're going to save that for another time. <laughs> but an opportunity felt like, man, I really had a chance, and then you just whiffed, whiff. Right on through, right? I had an opportunity just like that um, to meet a, a lady named Kim Walker Smith. Or maybe you've heard of her. If you've been around church, you know who that lady is. She's a, she's a singer, and she's done a lot of, like, really cool. Like, when I was first getting saved, and she was a big deal right then. And I, if you know me, like, I, I, I hope I get to know all of you really, really well. But once you start getting to know me, you'll learn that if I've got a skill, it's meeting new people. I love it. I absolutely think every single person who walks through that door is going to be my best friend. I don't know. I just believe it. I have this belief that we're going to really connect. I really do. So I have had the opportunity to meet lots of really important people throughout my travels, and I've been to conferences over the, all over the country, and I've been over the world, and I've met some really cool people, and I've never been scared. Never been scared. Never been worried to like meet someone who was really important and has you know, 20 million views on their worship leading and I've never been worried about that, but something happened when Kim Walker was right there. And I was, and something, something shifted in my brain. It was a small conference we were at. You remember this, honey? Of course you do. Uh, it was about 100, 120 people. It was like no more than the amount of people that are right here right now. This was as big as the conference was that I was at, and Kim Walker was there. Huge deal. She was leading the breakout. She was leading the, the teaching, and she was leading worship. And, and there was my moment, all right? It was in between services, and I... And she was right there. She was just standing right there. And there, there she was with her little, she got that short red hair. And she's just like really smaller in person than she was in, on the videos, you know. So I'm like, and, and I walk out. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to meet this person. I'm a worship leader. I want to, you know, get better at leading worship. I'm going to meet. And I walk right up to her. And I went full dodo bird. <laughs> full dodo. I, I lost every single word in my vocabulary. And I started to stutter, and like it was, you sing, you sing good, you sing real good. Um, you know, I just wanted to tell you, sing good, sing good. And I just lost control of my faculties. Okay, something weird happened, and and she, it didn't help the fact that this lady, she's intense, man. She's intense. She came over, and like, so I, I come up to her, and she she turns to me, she turns to me, and I start talking. She cocks her head to the side, leans in, and is like nodding. Let me do it for the camera. You ever, you ever talk to somebody like, you ever tried to talk to somebody like that? They're, they're so focused on you that you can't even, this right here. 
Like, Kim, sister, you need to back it up right now. I came up to you, but I feel like you need to remove yourself. It was so, she was looking right into my soul, right into my soul, and I lost all control of what I was going to say. What could have been a really great connection for me to get better at leading worship and to learn from one of the industry's best worship leaders turned into, if she remembers me at all, it's not a good memory. <laughs> it's not a good memory at all. I'm really embarrassed about it, but hey, at least it's good for a story, right? At least it's good for a story. When it comes to giving and generosity, though, I feel like many of us have an opportunity to make a difference over and over and over and over again. We're presented with these opportunities, and sometimes we just whiff. We just whiff. We don't see it, or something comes over us when we have an opportunity to be generous, and wh whatever the reason there's an opportunity right here and right now to do something really good, and we just miss it. We just miss the opportunity. And I don't want that for me. I don't want that for any of you. For Lifeline Church, I want us to understand that there are certain times that are very special, certain times that we want to be at our best, and certain times that we want to show up and say, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to miss this opportunity to do what you're showing me. We, we say things like, you know, right now it's not a good time. It's not a good time. And it's never a good time. Amen, everybody. When we're talking about finances and we're talking about generosity, sometimes it feels like it's never a good time. Never a good time. This is not the opportune moment. I don't have enough right now. I don't earn enough right now. You know, things are, things are a little tight. The bills are kind of stacked up right now, Pastor. I feel you. I get you. But right now is not a good time. I, I couldn't possibly make a difference with what I'm going to give. But rich or poor... I'm here to tell you that you absolutely do have the opportunity to make a difference, rich or poor, and you have it right here and right now. It's teed up for you. I'm a golfer, so I'm going to use that term. It's teed up, all right? All you got to do is walk up and hit it. All you have to do is show up and bring what you have to offer, and it's an opportunity for you to invest into the kingdom of God and sow seed that is going to grow far beyond what you're able to do. Is that making sense, everybody? This, this is God's laws. This is God's principles, that the things that we sow into the kingdom grow and flourish and multiply far beyond, far beyond what we bring to the table. There was a young boy in the Bible that, that brought some loaves and fishes, just a few of them. And Jesus said, oh, yeah, I can work with that. I can work with that. And he multiplied those things. When it comes to generosity, I have to tell you this. This is the first thing I want you to write down about generosity is that timing matters, Timing matters. We've talked all month long. You know, I mean, this is not the most evangelistic series in the whole world. I understand that, all right? You're like, oh, I can't wait to invite my friends to the next series, the one about stress and anxiety, the, 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 the money message. I'm going to just, like, hold off for a little while, <laughs> which is amazing that we've grown at all, but we have. It's, it's really great. It, shows, it says a lot about you. We talked a lot this last month about, about what to give, the percentage, the proportion. Like, if you came to all four weeks of this, you're pretty educated, and you know a lot of things about biblical generosity. And Tiffany did a, a great job teaching about, about the attitude and how we bring that. But I got to tell you today, timing. Timing matters so much, and it, uh, it matters more than you think, that you have an opportunity, and, and don't whiff, okay? I'm loving that term right now, whiff. I like saying it, all right? It just flows. I want to I teach you from the first book of the Bible, and I want to teach you from the first kid's in the Bible. I love making fun of kids because I got a six and seven year old that they're just hilarious. I love making fun of them because they can't, they can't, they don't really know what's going on. They're still in classrooms. So I'm going to take advantage of this season of life. All right. So let's talk about the first book of the Bible. Talk about timing. And let's talk about the first kids in the Bible. This is out of Genesis four. You can follow along in your notes or you can follow along on the screens. All right. And I've highlighted some words here. I didn't highlight them for you, but I'm just going to say them really strong and you'll, you'll get the gist of what's going on. Genesis 4, starting in verse 3. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Some of you might know, but it was Cain and Abel were the first kids of Adam and Eve. Cain and Abel. And I can never remember, like, who gave the good offering, who gave the bad one. I'm going to teach you a little trick on that, okay? Very good. I heard that. Very good. Well done. You got it. Abel also brought a gift. The best portions of the firstborn lambs of his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. And this is how I remember it. Abel was Abel. 
to bring a good offering to the Lord. But if you just, if, if I didn't highlight those words and you just read through this really fast when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portion of the firstborn lands of his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. If you just read it, if you were just in your Bible reading plan and you just read through it, you'd be like, what the heck, God? They both brought an offering. What gives? Why did you reject one and not the other? Why did you, why, why did you give honor to one and say the other? Oh, that's no good. I'm telling you, there's, there's only a couple ways that we can decipher this. There's only a couple indicators that tell us, and I think it has to do with timing. There is no mention in the Bible of Cain bringing the first fruits the first fruits. That, that's a term we hear in scripture, first fruits. But it says specifically he just brought some of it. I think Cain and Abel went to different churches. Uh, honestly, I do. I think like even back then there was variety, all right? You had the Baptists and you had the Pentecostals, all right? You had one over here. And, and Abel obviously went to church with his mom, obviously, because he was able to do good. Any, anybody who goes to church with their mom tends to do better in life. And then Cain stayed home and watched football. You know, he sounds a lot like a Raiders fan, like because he just like was like, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to take out my phone, you know. It's like, oh, the game's over. I forgot to do my giving. All right, like after the game's over, they're like, how much money did I lose? Okay, how much can I afford to give? All right, we're all set. That's what it looks like to me. Our pastor doesn't know the Bible very well. (laughs) He thinks Cain and Abel went to a different church. No, no, no. (laughs) No, no, no. Abel was Abel. But there's no mention of the timing of Cain's offering, and that's why I think that's what I think the major difference was. It's, this is another note. You can write this down if you'd like to. It's not just what we bring to God. It's when we bring it. It's when we bring it. There's nothing that indicates that the value of the offering was different. The only thing we know is that it was best and first. It was the best of my first. Cain just brought some. I just think it's so funny. I'm thinking about my kids, all right? I'm thinking about Cain and Abel, but I'm also thinking about my kids. I, I think about them, and they say they have a lot of, like, go-to statements. One of their go-to statements is just one more, just one more. You ever heard a kid say this, just one more? And it has to do, I'm going to tell you right now, when it has to do with candy or TV. Hello, TV. Just one more. Uh, just one more. They, have, they must have said that to me, both of them. Probably hundreds of times in their lifetime. Just one more. They're watching Dora or they're watching Timmy the Elephant. I, don't, I can't even keep track of all this weird stuff they're watching on TV. It's crazy. Netflix, Hulu, you need to dumb it down a little bit so that parents can understand what the heck is going on. One more. Just one more. And it's, that, it's this mentality. It's this mentality of I'll get to it. I'll, I'll get to it. It's always this what's next mentality. So, so since childhood... And it's not just my kids. It's not just your kids. It's also me. And it's also all of us. It's something that we're born with. There's this, there's this, uh, our sin nature. I don't know if, I didn't plan on preaching on this sin nature thing, but I need you to understand that we're all born with some tendencies. You don't have to teach your kids to steal toys from each other. You don't have to teach your kids to whine you don't have to teach your kids to, to do some of the bad things they do. Some of kids are nicer than others, but you don't have to teach kids to be bad. They're born with it. Come on. You don't have to say amen. I love your kids. They're awesome. But all of us, every single human being, we're born with a mentality of, of do, I'll do it later. I'll stop later. I'll start later. Clean my room. I'll do it later. Yeah. Come on. Amen, somebody. Oh, I'll do it. I'll clean my room. But when am I going to do it? Later. Later, amen. Some of the moms in here are looking at me like, where is my kid right now? I want to squeeze their hand so hard. Clean your room, I'll do it later. Uh, my homework, yeah, I'll do it after some TV. I'll do it after some TV, I'll do it after, I'll do it after dinner. Oh, I'll do it after dessert. I'll do it after the TV. I'll do it after I clean my room. I'll do it after, I just after, 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 and it keeps on getting pushed back. Big project at work, I got time. I got time, I'll get to it. Some of us don't grow out of this as when we're growing up into adults. Sow seed into the kingdom of God. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Uh, When I'm richer, when I get the promotion, when things aren't so tight right now. But I got to let you know that the time is now. The time is right now. And there's something else that goes on into the heart of not just children, but all of us. Let me know if you've ever thought this, heard this, or be the one to say this. Um, Clean your room. Ugh. I was going to do it until you said so. 
and now I don't want to. Come on, integrity time. Who said this as a kid? Did anybody ever say, I was going to do it? I was just about to do it. Any second I was about to do it. But mom, since you said I need to clean my room, uh uh-uh. Now because you said it, I don't want to do it. What is it about that? And uh, even as an adult, it's like... I was going to take out the garbage, honey. Why did you have to say that? I was about to do it right after this next YouTube video. Right after. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't, we don't even grow through it. Don't even go through it. This is, this is church. You can't lie about this, all right? I can see right into your soul right now. How come, how come someone telling us to do something makes it harder to do? Why? Why does hearing that you should do this make the thing that you know you should do harder? What is it about that? And it's, it, this is a real thing. This is a real sensation. Um, I, I think God may be asking us to either add or subtract some things from our life. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prophesy over some of you right now, and I'm going to take some guesses about some things that maybe God wants to add or subtract from your life. And we're thinking, ah, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Sometimes God is asking us to add or subtract, Uh, and let me just clarify what I mean by that, because we have a lot of people who are new to the Lord, uh, new to the Bible. When I say God is asking you, I don't mean he's writing in the clouds. I mean, you've got this sinking feeling in your spirit way down here that you ought to do something or ought to stop doing it. I believe that if you're anywhere pursuing God at all, and if you're here, you're listening online, that's you, that's you, that God might be trying to, to, to tell you something from the pit of your stomach, if that thing is a good thing, like, I know I should do this good thing, that's God urging you to to add something good. Or maybe you know you shouldn't be doing something. And so when I say God is asking you to add or subtract some things, that's what I mean, that he's giving you that feeling that you ought to do it. Maybe he's asking you to add planned generosity, and I'm using that phrase very specifically, planned generosity to your life. Maybe he's asking you to add regular, committed church attendance, like through going through our growth track and, and learning about our church and actually beginning to serve on the team. Maybe he's been asking you to, to add that to your life, and you've been thinking, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Maybe he's asking you to add more committed devotional time to your life. Like I've, I've talked to a lot of people that first thing in the morning, they wake up, they get to work, they get going, and I love that. I love hardworking people. But I think God might be urging some of you, and I'm just taking a guess here, that he might want to add, that he's urging you to add some more committed devotional time, spending some time in his word, spending some time in prayer, just listening to a worship song first thing in the morning. So start your day off right. Amen, everybody? You know who you are if if God has been speaking that to you. But maybe he's asking you to subtract some things. Maybe he's he's telling you, and I keep on pointing down here, because this is how I feel it. This is when God is urging me to do things, I kind of have this, it's just a sinking feeling. And maybe for you, he's asking you to subtract an unhealthy relationship from your life. Maybe there's some relationships that you know are toxic, and, and you know these people, they're, they're speaking death all the time, and they're just, they're just not going in the same direction that you want to go in, and God has been, he's been telling you, he's been, he's been showing you, he's been urging you that man, it's time to subtract some of those more destructive relationships. Maybe it's a dating relationship. Maybe you know you shouldn't be fooling around with that person and it's just, it's just not feeling right and that's God communicating to you that, hey, son, daughter, I got something better for you if you would wait, if you would, if you would take the time that it takes to, to, to do it right, to do it right. And we're so blessed around here that, that people have been, been seeing that. In fact, I forgot to mention uh, I wanted to celebrate, even though they're not here, I wanted to celebrate Joshua and Annalie on their marriage yesterday. They got married yesterday. You know Annalie, she's the only singer up here. Yes, give it up for them. They're probably watching. Let them, let them hear you. They're so devoted. They're probably watching on the first day of their honeymoon. Honestly, I bet they are. But if you don't know who Annalie is, she's the only lady singer that we have on the platform, and she married one of the homeboys on production. So yeah, I'm just saying, serving on the dream team has its benefits, Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Jocelyn Lonely. That was for you. That was a little one for you, a little zinger for you. But maybe he's asking you to subtract maybe an unhealthy relationship, um, maybe an addiction. He's asking you to subtract an addiction. Um, anything from uh, social media, maybe you've been spending way too much time on your device and you know it's, it's turning into an unhealthy thing, and God has been asking you to subtract that from your life. And this is all has to do with timing. 
This has to do with timing. I'm going to get to that. Maybe he's asking you to, to subtract um, maybe even more serious addiction, maybe something like a medication that expired, but you keep on renewing it, and you just know deep down, and you have this feeling like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, I could probably get through on Tylenol. Or maybe at night, it's been a little easy to drink one or two too many glasses of wine or beer, or maybe it's even more, more serious than that. But God, is, but God has been showing you, he's been telling you that it's time to subtract that. And the time isn't tomorrow to do it. The time isn't next week to do it. There's always two great days to start a diet. Am I right, everybody? Next week and, and tomorrow. <laughs> Those are the best days to ever start a diet. It's never today, is it? But it is. But it is. In fact, it's the, it's the only day. It's the only day we have. Tomorrow's not promised. We have today to focus on the things that God wants us to do. Don't be the kid that says, I was gonna. Don't be the kid that says, oh, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to it just one more, just one more day, just one more week. Take advantage of, and you could write this down. This is, a, this is noteworthy right here. Don't put off until tomorrow what God asks you to do today. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Today's the day. Monday is a great day to start stuff, but Sunday after church is even better. Come on, one amen? Can I get one amen on that? It's a good day to do something different in your life. It's a good day to start something fresh. When it comes to an application, man, what's better than today to do the thing that God asks you to do or asks you to take away? You might miss what God wants to do in this season. You might miss what God wants to do in, in you, in your life. Here, you can write this down and, um, and let me know if this resonates with you. Giving partners with the future. Giving partners with the future. Let's get back to the topic of giving for a minute because we're about to take the legacy offering here in just a few minutes. We've been talking about this all month, but if, you're, if, if this is like your first time here during the series or if this is your first time here at the church today, I'm so glad you're here. But we've been talking about this. This is not a surprise. This is not something that we, I decide we're going to pass the baskets a few times today. No, we've been talking about this, and we like to do that when it comes to a special offer. We don't even pass baskets around here. If you've been around any length of time, you know that. And so this is a once-a-year type of thing that we've been wanting to do. But let me just teach you a little bit about giving really quick. Um, and it has to do with this kind of offering we're doing today. Giving partners with the future. When you're generous towards an individual or an organization, you are making a difference in their future. You're making a difference in their future. Listen to this. 1 Timothy 6. Paul is talking to a, a pastor of a church. Paul appointed this pastor named Timothy. And Timothy is now over one of the more important churches in you know, in biblical history, in the church of Ephesus, okay? And he's, he's writing, so it's, the book is called First Timothy. It's the first letter back to Timothy after Paul leaves, and he says this. He says, teach those who are rich in this world. And by the way, if your household makes $50,000, you are in the top 1% of earning in the entire world. A lot of people don't know that. $50,000 a year in your household is the top 1%. I think many people are extremely wealthy and don't even realize how wealthy they are, um, top 1%. So teach these people who are rich, which is many of us, to not be proud and to not trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Anybody who's anybody, I don't care how much money you have, you know that, that money and wealth is very unreliable, very unreliable. I got a real life illustration. We're driving our van down the street about two months ago and I hear a clonk, clonk. Next thing you know, we don't have a savings account. <laughs> and we had to empty it out just to get our own van back. Yeah. It was crazy, man. Like, I posted when we got our van back, I posted it online. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, look at this. And, and people are like, oh, you got a new car. I'm like, <sighs> I cried one tear. I cried one tear. I'm like, no, that's just the old one. We just got it back. Cost us almost as much as a, a whole nother car. <gasps> Transmissions, man, they're not good at all. All that to say... Anybody who's anybody, anybody who's lived any length of time knows that money's unreliable. You can't count on it. Like, it can come. Suddenly, it's like, we're not even, we don't even feel like we deserve it. But then they're like, hey, you're going to make, I, I know people in their 30s, six figures, you know, and then people in their early 40s, six figures. It's like, okay, I'm just like, I'm just a reliable person and I make that much. Okay. And then I, I know that, so it comes really easily at times. Some, some people in here are like, not that easily, Pastor. <laughs> I get it, I get it. But it also leaves the bank account very, very easily. It's just unreliable. It comes and goes easily. 
And then he goes on to say this. Those people should not trust in their money and they're rich in this world. Their trust should be in God who richly gives all that we need for our enjoyment. Notice that, for our enjoyment. Um, I hope Tiffany and I didn't make anyone feel like in the midst of this entire series that if you're wealthy, that you're like second class and you gotta get rid of that. No, he, he makes people wealthy so we can enjoy it. You can enjoy it. It's okay. You don't have to feel bad. You can make money. You can do side jobs and make even more money. Like you can enjoy that. It's all right. Even the Bible says that. Go ahead, enjoy it. Enjoy the boat. Enjoy the, you know, the vacation home. You can do, it's okay. It's all right to have money. Don't, so it's, it's for our enjoyment. God gives us all these things for our enjoyment. But he says this, tell them to use their money to do good to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. And here it is. Here's the verse I want to get to. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Giving towards legacy today, and it's going to be a whole thing. Like We're, we're going to take like a few minutes and we're going to sing a song, and we're all going to bring this offering together. We've got baskets up at the front. And we, I, I didn't even know if we had baskets. I had to ask somebody this morning, do we got baskets? Do we have plates here? Like, we used to pass them, but, like, do we even have them anymore? So this is going to be a whole situation, but when you do this, when, you, when, you're, when you're giving a, a, an offering towards legacy, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever it is, but you're partnering with the future of, of this church. You're partnering with the future. No matter what the amount, you're laying a foundation for the future so that many can experience true life. So that, aren't you glad that Lifeline Church was here when you first started coming? I, I know I am. This church changed my life. Some people don't know this about me, but this is the first church I ever really started attending. I got saved in a Salvation Army, and then once I graduated, I got out for a little while, and then I started coming to this church. I'm glad personally, and that's why we go above and beyond to give towards the ministry of this church, and we've done it since before we were pastors here. We were not hired from out of town. You know, this is our church. And we believe in what God wants to do in the next 30 years of this church. We have big dreams, big vision, big goals. And when you come and say, hey, you know what? I can see it too. And that's part of our job to help you see that you're partnering with the, with the future. So let's talk. I want to just talk a minute about this. Our goal this year with Legacy is more seats, more souls. More seats, more souls. We want to make room for more people in this church because we feel like we have a lot to offer. And we're not the best church in town. We're not the only church in town. We're not the only good church in town. We have a lot of great churches in town. But we believe in what we're doing. And we believe that if there's more space, more room, and even when Christmas comes, it's going to get a lot fuller in here. It's already kind of like, on this side, it's hard to sit somewhere. If I come in with, a, with somebody else, it's kind of hard to find. This side, man, you, you know, learn to invite your friends over on this side. <laughs> you're, you're waiting for the next series, right? You're waiting for like the more, the more generic series. I get it. It's, it's all good. <laughs> It's our, <laughs> my jokes sometimes are like, eh, pastor, wrangle it in. It's okay. It's okay. So this, this, this thing that we're doing, more seats, more souls, uh, let me just describe it. Each one of these chairs, and we, we, we looked at it, there's, there's $70 each. They're not the most expensive chairs out there in the whole world, but we found the ones that were good enough, looked right, served our purpose, but didn't break the bank. They were $70 each. Believe me, we could have spent double that, could have spent double that. And so we went, and we were going to do this all together. You're sitting in some newer chairs right now. The chairs we had before were four generations old. I saw a, a lady who couldn't have weighed more than 130 pounds break one of our chairs. And so I'm like, that's it. We're not waiting till legacy. We're going to get some chairs in here now so nobody gets hurt. And so that we have room because we were kind of growing at the time too. And so we got as many as we could, but we wanted the church to come together for this. Like we wanted you guys to share and partner with the vision that, man, we need to make room for more people. That there's our friends and family that are going to be coming in here. And there needs to be room for everyone to experience the things that we get to enjoy all the time. So I want you to think about how many chairs can I provide with what God has blessed me with? How $70 a chair. Am I responsible for one chair in this house? Am I responsible for five, for ten? Maybe it's just part of one. That's all right, too. Like, there are people, I know, they've, they've given, they're very, very generous, and God has blessed them, and they're, they're responsible for many, 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 many chairs, many chairs. But I just want to level the playing field that no matter how many it is, I just want you to think about it that way, because you're, you're saying, I want to be a part of this. 
And I want to be able to, to like not write my name on it, but to be able to think about I was a part of that. I was a part of making room in this church, my church, so that more people can come. So look at it this way. When you're, and from the spectrum of giving, on the whole spectrum of giving, I got the whole spectrum figured out. From giving a burrito to a bum, that's over here. <laughs> I, know, I knew some people would love that. To giving college tuition to your own child. Okay, I would say that's the spectrum, okay? That's like the most superficial, like quick, easy, cheap thing you can do in passing all the way on this side to giving your own, and it's still generosity, by the way. Not every parent has to do it. You're choosing to do it for your own child, no matter what it is, no matter, no matter where you're at on that, that giving says two things. First, it says, I have or I want to have faith in your future, Think about it, giving to the bum. I I want to believe that you're not going to be hungry after I do this. And for your child, I want to believe that you're going to have a good education and have all the options that are available to you. Think about that. Giving partners your heart with the future of what you give towards. And when we give here today, it's no different. You're You're partnering your heart with what the future holds for this place. But it says the second thing is this. Not only do I believe, not only is my heart partnered, I want to make a personal impact on the future of that person or that organization. Not only do I believe that this burrito is going to fill you up, I, believe, I want to do something to make sure you're not hungry. And I want to make a difference in your life, child, by actually paying for your tuition. It says I, two things when giving. I want to believe in your future, and I want to make a difference in your future. James said it like this in uh, Jesus' brother in the Bible, book of James, says faith without works is dead. You can believe all you want in the future of this church. Oh, I believe it. But he says, but you need to partner that with, but it's important to have both, faith and works. You don't want to not have faith and just like give and be like, ah, check that box. No, we want to have both. We want to partner our heart in belief that the future is bright, but we also want to put our our money where our mouth is in in a sense. But in this time, very literally, this offering today is partnering with the practical needs of this church to have enough seating, to have enough space. And we want to max out one service before we have to start going to two and three and four and adding locations and everything else that we ever want to do in our lifetime. We want to be good stewards with what we've been given here today, here and now. That's why we put so much energy. That's why the team gives so much of their heart and soul. That's why we give sacrificially. We, so many of us do. So many of us do. Our giving today, you have or want to have faith in the future of growing this church. and Also, you're showing and acting on that faith and saying that you are willing to take part in that growth. And I don't, don't want you to just think about chairs either. I want you to think about who's sitting on those chairs because it's not about the chairs. It's about what the chairs represent, making space, making room for your loved ones, for your friends and family, the ones that you're hoping would want to hear messages like this that God wants to add or subtract things in their life, that if you could just have room for them to come with you, it, it partners with that, wanting to do that. These chairs represent making room for people because it's, it's not about the chairs. There are people out there, they're, they're waiting for us. There are people in Lodi, Stockton, the whole San Joaquin Valley. There are people waiting for us to show up. You might think, man, there's a lot of churches. They'll go somewhere. Let me tell you something. There's not enough churches for all the people in San Joaquin Valley that are not saved. Our county has almost a million people in it. People don't think about that. Within driving distance of this church, there's almost a million people. And if global statistics ring true, that means about 600,000 of them, if they pass away today, we lost it. We lost them. We lost them forever. Look, there's, there's not enough churches. There's not enough room. We, we need to get past the limited view of what we can see and begin to see the future and say, wait, man, we've got to get out there and get serious about this call to make disciples, about this call to reach all the nations and all different kinds of people and bring them into this house so so that they can have life, so they can experience true life, life abundantly. What we get to experience all the time, we are called to give that away. And by partnering with us today, you're putting your money where your mouth is to say, I want to be a part of that. I want to reach this community, and I, this is a great way to start. So let's, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's get to it. Let's, let's do this today. 
I'm going to ask the, the band to come on up because we're going to about to take this offering here in a minute. And uh, I'm going to put the giving slide up. Don't give yet. We're going to do this as a, as a group together. But band, you're coming up right now. And uh, we got a couple baskets. One's on my left. It's right there. And one's on my right. It's right there. I understand that many people give on their phones. Um, and that's just fine. Um, and we're about, to, we're about to sing a song together. We're not going to pass them around just because of the, the Jeremy Jeremy's. And I also want it to be, not because of that. I also want it to be something that you, instead of a passive you know, it's like it's coming, and I'm just going to, it's like and I'm, I'm, I'm standing up, and I'm coming forward. If you're old school like that and got dollar bills and checks, I know that's pretty rare, but I think it's really special to be able to do it. But either, no matter how it is, as the band's coming up, I want to just tell one last story, one last story, because I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't, I wasn't taught as a kid about giving, about generosity. I wasn't taught about any of that stuff. So as an adult coming to this church, I began to learn some things about generosity. Um, I remember when I started planned, consistent giving, generosity. I was giving my tithe. I remember it was like $26, $27, $28 a week because I was working at Coco's. That was it. When Black Bear used to be Coco's, I worked over there. And I would make like $200, $300 in tips. And I remember bringing the dollars. I remember bringing the dollars in. And uh, I, I I remember the way it made me feel. And that's what I want to convey to you. I remember the way it made me feel. I remember thinking, I, don't, I'm, I, was, I never thought about needing to get rich. I never thought about wanting to try and get a next promotion or get the next job. The reason that I did that, because I was grateful. I don't know how else to say it. I, just, I was just grateful to be there. You know, I didn't have anything. I'd only been saved a couple years. I was on the street, you know? I didn't, have, I didn't have a place to live. I was hooked on drugs. I didn't have anything. So the fact that I had something to give, it came from a place of gratitude. And that's what I want this offering to come from for you. Yeah. If you feel grateful at all of what God has done in your life, you don't need to go broke over this. Just do what God do what God says to you. But I want it to be from a place of generosity. Band, you can start anytime you want. Go ahead. Go ahead, guys. Oh, thank you for that. Ooh, the angels started singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Let gratitude be your motivator. It's, I just got, if I have enough time, I do. I don't want anyone to feel pressured or hurt or feeling like like we need anything. We don't. God's streets are paved with gold. Do you understand me? He doesn't need this. But what I need for you, my church, my church, is to overflow out of your heart. Okay, I'm standing in the way of this offering, so let's do this. Father, bless this offering today. We'll we'll sing this song together. Would you all stand with me? Come on, let's stand together. Let's stand together and just as God leads you. I I really wanted to give the offering first, but you guys are so generous, you didn't even let me. (laughs) 